does senescent cells impact or make worse? Is it, yeah, yeah. is it all of them? Well, it's a very long list. And the reason why we think that is because we, and also our colleagues at the Mayo Clinic, have made transgenic mice. So they have a genetic mechanism for killing senescent cells. So this is not a drug that people will take, it's a transgene. But these are very powerful mice because you can cross these mice now to all the different models of different age-related diseases. And now ask, if you do eliminate senescent cells, what happens to the disease? So I have a list which I've stopped updating because every two weeks, there's a new disease added to the list. And they range from things like neurodegeneration, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, osteoarthritis, macular degeneration, cardiovascular disease, cataracts, type two diabetes, the list goes on and on and on. Now, there are two things to understand what these transgenic mouse models have told us. The first is that senescent cells are important drivers of the disease. But if you eliminate senescent cells, what you tend to do is either lower the severity of the disease or delay their onset. In rare cases, you can actually reverse the disease and make the tissue healthy. And so this is an active area of research, understanding what separates the tissue where you just get delay versus mm -hmm. where you get reversal. We still don't know the complete answer to those questions. But from the mouse models, this list is, is really impressive. It's most of the age-related diseases you can think of. Right. So, I, I mean, it would s seem to make sense that one would try to proactively just remove senescent cells as we get older anyway. I mean, yes. just... I mean, not constantly. Again, cut right. yourself, you're in trouble. Get in a car accident, you're in trouble, right? Have surgery, you're in trouble. Right. You don't want to be pregnant women because you have an embryo that needs to develop. Um, so there will be limits to these drugs, of course. Right. Yes. No. Absolutely. But um, as we get as we get older, we're not um, yet developing, and so we we don't need them. We we the real need is for tissue repair. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So on that, so does kind of going back to the diseases. So uh, do senescent cells help with cancer or removing senescent cells? Would it help once you have cancer? Would removing senescent cells help, do we think? Possibly. So there are examples where the presence of senescent cells, because of what they secrete, can actually feed a cancer. And also, and e even more importantly, enable a cancer cell to metastasize. So most people do not die of the primary tumor when you're first diagnosed with cancer, frankly, the best cure is cut it out. And that's what surgeons try to do. And if it's very early stage, that is usually a cure. The problem is most of the time, it's a little bit later stage. And then what happens is the cells break away from the primary tumor. They see the lung or they see the brain or the bone or different parts of the body. And then they begin forming these secondary cancers, which are generally more aggressive than the primary cancer. And that quickly becomes a losing battle, not always, but often. Mm -hmm. And so the idea would be to try to eliminate senescent cells as early as possible because they can fuel this morph morphing of, of, of cancer cells into more aggressive phenotypes. And, you know, we don't know if senolytics will help. We hope they will, but that has not been tested. But I will remind you, one of the great therapies for cancer now that's being developed is immunotherapy, right? You develop 
ways to get the immune system to selectively attack the cancer cell. And this is now saving the lives of patients who would normally have died of certain types of cancer. For example, um, metastatic melanoma, which you will certainly die of, but now there are immunotherapy ways of getting the immune system to begin to attack that cancer cell. And it's saving the lives of patients, but there are complications because now the immune system begins attacking things it normally would not. For example, certain cells in the pancreas. So one of the complications of certain immunotherapies is what we call type one diabetes. So most elderly people develop type two diabetes. Type one is the type you're born with, where basically you have a defective um, pancreas, and it's usually because your immune system has attacked those pancreatic cells. Now you can live with that. You take insulin shots, or 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 you have a patch that delivers insulin when you need it. Much better than living with a melanoma that is metastasized. But you see what I'm saying is hmm. that we're constantly learning this balance of therapies and senolytics are no different. Right, yes.